Hello, my name is Dale Dufay, and welcome to Mandela Effect Equals Knowledge. And we're, we're going to talk about something uh, that explains a lot of things and what we experience. Now, first of all, I'd like to go over the continental United States and the reason why I wanted to do this video is because this, look at the Dakotas, North and South Dakota, that, especially North Dakota, that's the narrowest I've ever seen it. That's one of the things I first started noticing uh, being in these realities where the, the earths are so small, I call these Orion dwarfers, I noticed the Dakotas. Uh, and most, most of all the central states, uh, they seem to be that's where the compensation is because obviously being a dwarf earth, the co continental United States is narrower east and west, uh, you know, and also shorter north and south considerably. But it seems like the central states is where the compensation is, east and west, and the Dakotas were always more narrow than I recall. Now this is, again, the narrowest I have ever seen them, and it just caught my attention, which you know obviously indicates that we shifted again. Uh, the sole portion that we were born with, the one we'll always have, the one that has our memories, shifted into another replica version of ourselves. Uh, in another reality, uh, in a completely different Earth, uh, in a completely different location in the Milky Way galaxy. Now, many of these previous Orion Dwarfers, these realities, they have been in uh, the inner Orion arm or the Orion spur, depending on what reality we're in. Uh, but th there's always uh, variations and differences, and that's usually how you can tell. Uh, I mean, look at how small Washington State is. Uh, obviously, that's where the compensation was taken, north and south, uh, and east and west. Now, Idaho is pretty much the same in Montana, uh, but the Dakotas were at least 200 miles wider. And even in the very recent previous realities we were, uh, uh, that I was in, it was you know narrower than I recall, but not this narrow. This is the most I've ever seen. Uh, so it really got my attention. So I wanted to talk about um, I used to t take trips from Naperville, Illinois to Denver, Colorado, uh, ever since the mid seventies, all the way into the eighties. And even I think recently, uh, early nineties, 1990s, I've taken this trip dozens of times, uh, interstate 80 to interstate 76. Uh, and it, the remarkable thing is, is it, it was, I always remember it being exactly a thousand miles uh, so I would take take it in one day uh, and go 500 miles into Lincoln midway and then gas up and then finish off into Denver so it was always I always remember it being exactly a thousand miles uh, so I thought I'd check uh, actually check the measurement uh, first of all I usually like to check the distance between New York and Los Angeles and the last time I did that again that's all we all we have is our memory you can't really write anything down or keep notes I mean you can but when you wind up in another reality and another replica version of yourself you're going to see that they did the exact same thing uh, in the you know and for the referencing their reality uh, so they're going to see what they wrote down or you wrote down or whatever so it's always back to square one your memory uh, and that's the that's the th problem with the Mandela effect is we can't prove anything. So we'll go from New York here uh, to Los Angeles, and that, like I said, was uh, twenty five hundred. Uh, but here it's fifty miles less. Uh, again, you can't you know this this version of myself with its original soul portion always knew that that was the distance. Uh, but I call re this my soul portion, of the one I'll always have, uh, recalls this being 3,500 miles in, my, in the original reality where this portion of my soul originated. Uh, so, you know, it, it explains a lot of things. Uh, first of all, it explains why we get jet lag uh, because we're going, say if you're going from New York to Los Angeles, uh, you're going a, a, a good, a great distance at a great speed, a uh, minimum of 500 miles an hour. Uh, so, you know, think of it, you know, look at it this way. 
it's interesting because it, it doesn't really explain jet lag. There's no way, first of all, there's no way that our soul or our mind and body knows we're crossing time zones. Uh, that always confused me. I was always very, you know, I've experienced jet lag and I was just like, how could that be? It doesn't seem possible. How do we, how does our body know we're crossing time zones? Time zones that were created by human beings and time, which was invented by human beings because of our finite existence. Uh, so there's no way that we should experience jet lag. It was always very confusing, but after experiencing the Mandela effect it, and gaining knowledge from it, uh, it explains why we get jet lag. Because, uh, because you know, even if some of you don't recall being on a super earth or anything like that, uh, you have to know that you're there. Even right now, where you originated from, your replica version of yourself that this portion of your soul originated from is still there uh, in that reality. And uh, so basically, you know, who knows how many super earths there are out there, millions perhaps. So, and we're in who knows how many of those realities, if not all of them. So say if you're in New York and you take a trip, you know, take an airline from New York to Los Angeles, uh, every one of the replica versions of yourself, no matter how many there are, there could, like, could, like I believe it's infinite. Uh, but let's just say there's you know, thousand of you. Well, every, every one of you is, is going to take that flight and you're going to depart at the same time in your reality, each reality. But the, each reality, the jets, you know, range from 500 to 600 miles an hour. They're all going to go the same uh, speed. Uh, but however, in these realities on these dwarfers, there is a phenomenon that is explained by what we're experiencing that science cannot explain, and that's jetliners stalling in midair without falling out of the sky. It's physically impossible. Uh, but we know that that has to happen because these planes are going a thousand miles, in some cases, less to their destination. Uh, they literally have to stall out to compensate and let the, their counterparts with, you know, all the replica versions of all the pilots, the pilots and the passengers and everything to catch up. In a sense, it's, it's kind of, it's a paradox, but that explains why the jets stall out. Now it doesn't stall out enough to compensate entirely, but it does a little bit because it's that quantum entanglement that has to be maintained as much as possible. And of course it can't maintain uh, with, with this reality that we have to go great distances at high speed, thereby, you know, getting jet lag. But it's so easily explained by uh, what the Mandela effect's revealing. The fact that there's realities where the continental United States is a thousand miles less than it is in other realities. Uh, so the jets are all your depart, all your versions of yourself are all taking this trip in all their realities and they're leaving and the departure point at the same time. But they're all going to uh, arrive at the destination at different times in their reality. Think about it. In some cases, two hours. Uh, so that takes the quantum entanglement with our soul portions that are constant. You know, it's important to realize they're connected constantly on a subconscious level, our soul portions. Uh, so we're we are totally unaware of it. That's why we didn't don't know why we get jet lag. But the fact is, is some of the versions of yourself are going to arrive at the destination, uh, in some cases hours before other versions of yourself do. So that's going to just put everything out of whack because we don't, you know, it's another thing we don't realize. It's why we were able to walk, breathe, function, do the things we do is because we have that quantum entanglement with who knows how many replica versions of ourselves that have been sharing our soul since the day we were born. Uh, so that's, you know, it's, so it, until all the replica versions of yourself settle down in the hotel and get to doing what they're supposed to do the next day, vacation, business, whatever, uh, it's going to take a couple days for all their soul portions to get into synchronization again. And until then, every replica version of yourself 
And every portion of your soul is going to have that sensation of jet lag. Uh, it, even the v replica versions of yourself that arrive sooner uh, because of that c connection, that subconscious connection. Uh, but that totally explains jet lag. I mean, think about it. That's what's really amazing about the Mandela effect. It's helping us uh, get answers to things we've always wondered about. That's one of the things I've always wondered about because I've experienced it. And many have that fly. And there's no explanation other than we're crossing time zones and we're not used to the different time zone. But again, really, time is irrelevant. And the Mandela effect is proving that. Time was invented by humans. We shouldn't be feeling that sensation if this was the only Earth and the Milky Way galaxy and the only reality. We would never feel that. But again, we wouldn't exist. Uh, we have to have those other realities. It's always been that way. That's the why we do the things we do. That's why, I mean, it's, it explains everything. Uh, why we have to practice, why we, uh, you know, so many, why we get REM sleep. That's another thing. That's the time your soul is in synchronization. And you're not going to achieve that until, uh, the, with the jet lag, until that's over with. Now, again, the, fur, the further the distance, the more you're going to get, have it. Now, I flew from Chicago to Denver, uh, and that thousand miles in the reality I recall and it was and I never really I got it but when I flew to Los Angeles or San Francisco I did get it uh, so I, that was confusing to me but again it wasn't that great of a distance uh, difference um, uh, well, I'll get to that we'll measure from Naperville to Denver I remember that being exactly a thousand miles but it's like 110 miles less here so that's not significant enough to really get jet lag because all, for the most part, all the replica versions of myself would arrive at the, you know, the destination in Denver at the same time, well, within an hour, you know, half hour. Uh, so that wouldn't be much. But the further distance you go, we you know, fly, the more you're going to get jet lag. But when you drive, you don't get it because you're not. It's not a fat, You know, you're not going. You're going a great distance, but you're doing it at, at you know, sixty-five, you know, seventy-five miles an hour. Uh, so you're not going to, you know, it gives, it's more time for your soul portions to remain in the synchronization throughout that trip. Now, some w versions of yourself will obviously arrive sooner, you know, because many of you have noticed that it's closer uh, to get to grandma's house than you remember. Uh, so, but you're not going to feel the jet lag because the speed is a lot uh, less. So, you know, but it... <laughs> Mandela effect explains why we get jet lag, and, and that's what's amazing. Uh, so while we're at it, let's um, let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to the Dakotas, but let's measure. Uh, I'm gonna go from Naperville, and this is the trip I used to take all the time. You know, dozens of times. Uh, it was exactly a thousand miles. Now, I remember it being a thousand miles on the uh, on the highway. You know, of course you take. I-80 and all of that, but it still was pretty close to as the bird flies. Uh, but here, here it is, look at that, 892 miles, or 95, let's just say. So it's 105 miles less than I recall. And, and But th again, this replica version of myself, when it had its original soul portion, along with all the versions of myself that have been sharing my soul since the day I was born, you know, no knew that the trip was only eight hundred and ninety miles plus, little over. Uh, so it was no different to them. But they they may be in the reality where it's a super Earth and the distance is a thousand miles, and they're they're talking exactly as I am, but in different terms. And, you know, saying how they recall it being this distance, and now it's a thousand in that reality they're in. The one I recall, uh, but it, it, you know, it's a <laughs> just amazing how let's get to the Dakotas here let's measure from Fargo uh, uh, on the east side here let's measure straight across I remember this being you know three four hundred miles here no I mean four or five hundred miles I'm sorry because I've gone across Nebraska and I know the Dakotas I know somebody that lives up there or in, in South Dakota uh, they live in uh what was the name of it? You, uh, no, I can't remember. Eureka, uh, which is about in the center, right about up here, close to the 
I believe that's the Red River or I, I, but that anyway it's just look at how narrow this is the narrowest I've seen the Dakotas and I totally recall it being at least that much wider you know even in the previous realities uh, but the one the re initial reality that I recall that this portion of my soul originated it was a roar like that going at 500 miles uh, you know both the Dakotas but here again, it has to be the comp state line has to compensate somewhere uh, in these realities. And, but yet, it, it, everything remains the same. Uh, again, like Mount Rushmore is not uh, in a different location or anything. Uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. So that's why we get jet lag. And that's why, you know, I used to, when I drove that thousand miles, it was like nothing. And I used to feel when I made, arrived in Denver at the, you know, at the hotel and things like that, I always felt like I could go another few hundred miles, you know, I never could figure that out. Uh, but now I know why, because there was versions of myself that did arrive uh, sooner and was already there, you know, <laughs> but it was strange. And, but you know, yet the, per, the versions of yourself that have to go the greater distance, uh, you know, compensate by having that sensation. I always wondered why I hit felt like I could keep going it's crazy it's that quantum connection so that's what's you know yet another thing the Mandela effect has taught us you know why we get jet lag why uh, we tra you know the traveling is even why we have them sensations while we're traveling uh, you know it's just amazing when you think about it and so with that this is uh, Dale DeFay again I thank you for watching and we'll Google try to at you later. Love you.